Hello and welcome to Rotted Reviews. And today I'm going to be discussing an honest to God treat. I'm talking about the 2000 anthology film Terror Tract. Written and directed by Clint Hutchinson and also directed by Lance Treeson, this is an anthology film with the binding storyline of Make Me an Offer, where a realtor played by John Ritter himself is showing prospective buyers prospective homes. Day like this makes me love my job, and it's not just selling houses. But in the uh, interest of legal full disclosure, every time he enters into the doorway of one of them, he is forced to tell the tale of the macabre that wound up getting it empty in the first place. So therein, we wind up with the story. Storylines of Nightmare, Bobo, and Come to Granny. I had never heard of this movie before. I just kind of heard some whispers in the wind of it. And it's unfortunately somewhat difficult to watch. Uh, sorry to put it this way, but it really is. Um, there's no streaming options available. It currently has a DVD release of a double feature with Cherry Falls, but that's honestly only available at fairly predatory prices. And there's a VHS copy available, I mean, on eBay and such, if you wanted to go down the VHS route. But unfortunately, options are limited. And uh, it's a real shame. I hope that they release this on some sort of digital streaming platform because this was an absolute gem. That's not to say it was the greatest anthology of all time. But, uh, and I know that a lot of people out there, I get comments about this, that folks don't like anthology films. And I, I get that. I understand that. But for me personally, there's a certain magic to them um, when they're really done well. And I think that there's a few key components in there that kind of put them above and beyond and you know it actually has inspired me to start actually drafting and creating a video about in defense of anthology films and what about them works the history of them so on and so forth so look for that coming up in whenever uh but <laughs> Uh, as far as what makes an anthology film work, I think that Terror Tract did a fantastic job, even though it was fairly uh, just average, just somewhat above average, I would say. It never really broke the ground into great. It still adhered to a lot of those elements and wound up sticking the landing so well that I was just really enthused about talking about it as soon as the end credits started rolling. I'm like, I got to make a review of this movie. And speaking of comments and hearing people's feedback, which I try to do and try to maintain some level of, uh, you know, absorbing constructive criticism with an open mind. One thing that has been said is that when I do review an anthology film, I actually don't do a good enough job actually discussing the individual segments and kind of treat it as an overall thing. So, fine. <laughs> Here we go. As far as the nightmare segment goes, that's basically a comeuppance tale in which uh, a wife is cheating on her husband and it kind of goes sideways when he finds out about it and there's a confrontation and then supernatural elements start to take place from there. Then we have the middle segment of Bobo in which a family of a mother, father, and young little girl stumble across a monkey. Oh, what's the rush, princess? Come out and see Bobo. Bobo? It's his name, Bobo, but I've got to get outside because he wants some more. Oh. He just loves cereal. You scared him. I'll well, be. It really is a monkey. See, I told you it was a monkey. A <laughs> legit monkey wearing a little organ grinder's uniform in the backyard, and the daughter takes an absolute monkey shines to it and wants to adopt it for her own. And there's just a lot of family squabbling going on about whether or not they should, who should they call, so on and so forth. And it's found out in short order, mostly by the father only, that the monkey is indeed evil. Which leads to a bit of family fracturing as he's doing battle with this monkey and at the same time also battling his daughter who wants to keep it and defend it and his wife that is basically just kind of passive about the whole thing. With the father played by Brian Cranston, this was worth the price of admission alone, this Bobo segment. Uh, I mean, okay, so anthology films, by and large, for the most part, kind of follow a little bit of a formula, and one of the most repeated formula moments is comeuppance tales. I mean, this movie is no exception with the nightmare segment. Uh, you know, they'll have a bad person doing bad things, and then bad things will happen to them, oftentimes in ironic supernatural fashion. It's, you know, tried and true. It's a tale as old as time. You know, it takes a lot of inspiration from Twilight Zone, so on and so forth, uh, except just adding some bloody, gruesome, gory elements to it, which is fine but i like the ones that deviate from that i gotta admit i like the ones that really just kind of you know there's something magical about watching brian cranston just go ham on this situation and while trying to kill this monkey the description alone should be enough to sell folks as far as i'm concerned and it was absolutely enough to sell me and 
It was just, it delivered. It so delivered the Bobo segment. And then we have Come to Granny, in which a young man is uh, taking part in a therapist session for the first time, where he's admitting that there's this serial killer out there that's wearing a granny mask, and he is having premonitions, a psychic link between them, so that he's seeing the murders happen, and he doesn't know what to do about it, and things kind of escalate from there. Uh, I thought this one was actually pretty decent. It, w- it would probably be, uh, in order of preference, Bobo, Come to Granny, and then Nightmares. Nightmares to me, it was okay. It was just nothing special. But also one of the great elements of this that I think, as far as anthology films uh, sometimes miss on, is the binding storyline of Make Me an Offer with John Ritter. Oftentimes the binding storyline is kind of forgotten or put by the wayside or basically just used as a way to here's the next segment, that's it. Which if that's what it wants to do, fine. But I don't think it's really going to do itself any favors as far as just kind of glossing over things. I think some of the best anthologies really put a lot of emphasis and effort into those storylines and do something that (laughs) is wonderful that not a lot of anthology films do, but Terror Tract did, and some of the great ones like Asylum and uh, uh, Christmas Horror Story do extraordinarily well, which is use that binding storyline to stick the landing. See, one of the things that I love about anthologies, and I'll be discussing this further in the upcoming video that's going to be coming out, but I don't know when, um, is... It doesn't have to tell any kind of long-form character arcs. You know, it doesn't have to have growth, uh, not a massive amount of conflict, not a, you know, huge amount of, well, anything. You can have just basically a concept. It's basically, you know, taking the concept of, you know, what if short film, but wrapped around, you know, in this wonderful little package here. But for the most part, the individual segments themselves can just exist as a concept. You have a concept, you throw it out there, it lasts for 10-15 minutes, you're good. And there's nothing wrong with that. And one of the best things that anthology movies can do is to go bonkers at the end. Make me an offer. We're not making an offer. You have to buy a house from somebody. Why not me? These are quality homes! If you can stick the landing, then it will make everything completely worth it, even if you have just fairly middle-of-the-road segments like Nightmares. And yes, Bobo was really great about absolutely adding to that element of frantic, manic energy and having just off-the-wall stuff. But at the same time, then we also had the Come to Granny thing, which was okay. It was, you know, like I said, my second favorite of the three. Because it kind of drifted down in the energy level, the idea of actually bringing it back to the Binding storyline of make me an offer and have that reach a logical storyline escalation point that had it bonkers by the time the end credits rolled made everything absolutely worth it. I was smiling from ear to ear by the time this movie was over. So uh, based on that, I would have to say that Terror Tract is a movie that I heartily recommend, and I do hope that it's going to wind up in a place of higher availability soon. But if you can find a copy, if you're rummaging around DVD shelves and you find the double feature with Cherry Falls, if you're just you know going around your local Goodwill and you see a VHS copy, please pick it up. I don't think you'll be too disappointed. I loved it. And I hope you will too. So that should about do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.